Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we would be covering the topic pre-shipment finance. This video is part of playlist uploaded on international trade finance. Kindly go through the playlist. I have already uploaded many other videos which would give you a broad perspective on this whole course. If you like the video, do hit like button and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find the link to the playlist in the description box as well as on the i button. Now let's move forward. Before going to our topic on pre-shipment finance, I would like to give you a brief about trade finance because I believe that before moving to any topic, it's very important that you have prerequisite concept which is linked to the same. So, there are three major important things that I would like to mention. We have already covered this in my other videos also. So, I requested to just check the playlist to get a, a good idea about this whole course. But anyways, three major things that you need to keep in mind. Why was trade finance in existence? So, here we are talking about foreign trade. We know that when we are talking about the domestic market scenario, there is buyer and seller involved. One will be shipping the goods, another will be making the payment and there is risk involved regarding what if the payment is not made, what if the goods are not shipped. But in our scenario, when we are referring to foreign trade, both the buyer and seller are located in different countries. Countries having different political economical scenarios and the time that it will take from goods to be shipped from one location to another location and the payment to be made. So, the risk involved becomes even larger. Now, trade finance provides with different payment methods to mitigate that risk, to reduce that risk and with the involvement of banks and financial institutions to give a kind of assurance to both the parties. Also, trade finance provides, uh, uh, provides with different pre-shipment and post-shipment finance methods to keep the finance flowing between the trade transaction so that there is no shortage of funds which can stop the trade from happening and which can stop the economy from, grow, from growing. Do you know that uh, our country is largest trading partner with US, China, UAE, Saudi Arabia and even Russia? You know that major trades happening in our country is related to products like petroleum, medical apparatus, electrical equipments, precious stones, etc. So even as a country, we are dependent for import and export to other countries. Why does this whole concept of foreign trade takes place? So there are different scenarios, just considering one or two, that maybe one country cannot produce certain products as cheaply as we can. So that country would like to import the product from us rather than incurring huge cost in producing the same. Similar ways, different countries have different comparative advantage. Some are good in export of certain materials because they are having abundance of it. Some would like to import certain materials because they are having shortage of it. Now to make this balance out, there is this trade happening. Now let's come to scenario where we are talking about individual uh, person, individual exporter. So suppose you are a seller or exporter who is settled in India. You would like to export handloom merchandise which are in huge demand in US market. Now we would see with our upcoming slides that how you can get many options of pre-shipment finance to manage your funds. Uh, to manage your funds accordingly and not lose on any opportunity. You can also see this, uh, you can also just read uh, what I have just now explained that uh, trade finance represent the financial instruments and products that are used by companies to facilitate international trade and commerce. The function of trade finance is to introduce a third party. Third party here is banks or financial institution to transaction to remove the payment risk and the supply risk, payment risk by buyer side, supply risk by seller side. According to WTO report about 80 to 90 percent of world trade relies on trade finance and the same is still growing. So even if you are learning about trade finance, there is huge scope in future for its growth and the career prospective as well. Now let's see some of the topics which trade finance generally covers. It is inward and outward remittances, letter of credit and bank guarantees, 
pre and post shipment finance which is our major topic for this video corporate banking products factoring and forfeiting so let's move on to pre shipment finance pre shipment finance is credit granted to the exporter by a financial institution before shipment of goods now see as i gave you an example that you are an exporter settled in india and you want to export handloom merchandise which are in demand in us market so there is a buyer in us market who is asking you to export those handloom merchandise the buyer or the importer has placed you an order for about 200 cartons of boxes of the merchandise now which is value of worth usd 10 lakh supposedly uh, that the material the merchandise that you have to export is for value usd 10 lakh and you have got this order from the importer who is located in us now as soon as you have received the order you both the parties have uh, have made a sales contract you need to start producing the goods and ship the goods to the another country to the us market where the importer is located now you see once you have received a confirmed order from an importer you have this obligation to produce the products and deliver the finished goods now you must have that much amount of money to spend in various costs which are involved in this production process what if that moment of time you are not having that uh, abundance of finance you can rely on your bank or financial institution to provide you finance because for uh, shortage of finance you can't lose on opportunity maybe if you are delaying it that opportunity that order might be given to some other exporter uh, some other exporter some other seller so you would be losing out to that opportunity so you would try to say that okay uh, you have provided the order i would start uh, producing the goods and i'll be shipping the goods as soon as possible so that you don't lose out on opportunities because of shortage of funds now the funds you will be arranging from the bank or financial institution in form of pre shipment finance again things you need to keep in mind pre shipment finance is you need finance before shipment of goods so you have got an order you need to produce the goods and then ship the goods to another country in this whole procedure of the production of the goods you will be incurring cost to manage that cost you need fund and you are relying on bank or financial institution to give those funds to you which you will be repaying later when you will be getting the amount from the importer okay this concept is clear so see there are various co cost involved in production such as procurement of raw material manufacturing process labor packing and storage cost fret charges and other expenses i need not mention this this is very much clear that whenever you are doing a manufacturing of certain products you will be procuring the raw materials involved in that you will be uh, going through the, the products will be going through the manufacturing process there will be cost of labor the packing the storage and there will be certain charges and expenses which need to be included in the overall cost now these are the pre shipment cost which are involved in the production process so you will be going to bank and asking for pre shipment finance now see your pre shipment finance can be extended in two forms packing credit in indian rupees and packing credit in foreign currency maybe you would like to get the funds in foreign currency itself so you can take that also maybe you will like to get the funds in indian rupees many of the exporter what happens that they are maintaining account in foreign currency for the ease of transaction because i am transact i am making transaction with a, a buyer which is located in us market so why not i open an account in in my country with currency us dollar because anyways i am receiving the funds in usd and i'll be making the payment in the same currency so it would be more feasible for me so many exporter do that they ask they even ask for packing credit in foreign currency as well for the ease of their transaction but there is option of getting packing credit in indian rupees as well conversion will be done and in both the cases you you need to notice i'll be explaining in the further slide so that it would be better for you for now you can understand that pre shipment finance it can be in indian rupee 
it can be in foreign currency exporter has the exporter has the uh, advantage to decide on which currency they want to get the packing credit to get the funds in now this is the main part you need to understand the whole flow chart so that the things would be more clear applicant is exporter and beneficiary is importer so we here we are saying here we are seeing the whole flow chart of pre shipment finance so suppose there is uh, taking our own example suppose there is importer who is located in us suppose there is exporter who is located in india now there has been a sales contract between both the parties related to handloom merchandise so the importer is asking the exporter to give handloom merchandise to ship the goods of uh, 200 cartons worth usd 10 lakh and the uh, importer has already placed an order that i am giving you an order we are into sales contract i need the commodities with worth or value usd 10 lakhs now the exporter has got the order but the exporter has not got the payment why because this transaction is on credit basis so what happens even when you are going to market there are certain transactions which you just pay in cash but mostly when we are taking about foreign transactions most of the transactions are on credit basis it means that the payment is made on later date so this is a credit payment and also uh, also the sales contract has been done the importer has placed an order worth usd 10 lakh now the exporter has to start producing the goods the exporter has to start manufacturing the products that are ordered exporter will be providing to the bank the purchase order lc or the or the contract copy so there should be an underlying document which is very much relevant if you want to get this uh, pre-shipment finance if you want to get this packing credit so exporter in in our case we saw that order was placed so there must be a purchase order copy exporter will be giving the purchase order copy it can be contract copy also if there is any certain project going on and you have taken the obligation of completing that project and providing the equipments so there can be a contract copy as well there can be letter of credit as well so in this case the exporter is providing purchase order to the bank or financial institution and the exporter is asking that please provide me pre-shipment finance to manufacture the goods so bank or financial institution has seen the purchase order copy and has provided the exporter with pre-shipment finance to pre-shipment credit or funds you can say enough funds to produce the goods to manufacture the goods now those goods one manu once manufactured has been shipped to the buyer or the imported so the goods has been shipped to the buyer the funds was utilized and now on maturity so there must be a due date what is pre-shipment finance it is a kind of loan that the exporter is taking so every loan need to be repaid and there is certain interest which is charged and there is certain tenure for after which you need to pay the whole obligation so on maturity exporters account will be debited with the principal and the interest amount so this whole flow chart must be clear to you i'll just be repeating once so there is an importer and exporter both has formed a sales contract importer has placed an order worth usd 10 lakhs exporter is not having enough funds at that point of time so exporter approached to bank or financial institution provided the purchase order copy and asked for free shipment finance or funds to manufacture the products bank has provided enough funds to the exporter now the exporter has manufactured the products the goods are ready and has been shipped to the buyer on maturity the exporter's account will be debited for the principal and interest amount and the exporter will be getting the payment from the importer which is uh, as per their sales contract there are certain prerequisite for getting packing credit if you are an exporter so the exporter should be a regular customer or bona fide with good standing in the market this is very much clear from the point itself Second point is importer exporter code issued by DGFT. So IEC code is 10 digit alphanumeric code which is issued on the basis of PAN of an entity. It enables the entity or the business to import and export in India. An IEC code is mandatory 
if you are an importer or an exporter based based in located in india so this this is issued by dgft that is director general of foreign and trade and uh, this iec code must be checked before providing packing credit the iec code must be in place third point is exporters should not be in caution list of rbi now rbi provides caution listing if shipping bills remains outstanding for certain exporter for more than 2 years now let me make this easy easily understandable for you so for example you are an exporter and you have shipped your goods and uh, after a certain point of time maximum 180 days or 270 days you will be getting the payment for that goods now that payments you need to inform the bank uh, this is whole centralized system and it is done uh, online also so you need to inform the bank that you have got the payment with certain reference number now that payment will be used to close the shipping bills or the documents that you submitted in the bank so that the same can be reported to the rbi that okay the goods was exported from our country we have got the payment and now the documents are closed this is the simple procedure now for certain reasons if ha- if an exporter has not provided the payment reference number and the shipping bill the documents are still outstanding rbi will put them in caution listing after 2 years because after so many reminders if the payment has been received and the goods have been shipped so the documents must be closed and if for some reason the exporter is not showing the payment it is uh, exporter is not getting the shipping bill closed that exporter comes into caution listing which is not good importer shall not be located in the country listed in sanction countries by us uk or un so there are certain countries which are sanctioned for any kind of trade transaction now those countries for example are cuba sudan north korea syria because of the political civil economical instability in those countries and certain unethical and illegal things happening so us uk and un they provide the country's name in sanction list and we must check that the exporter who is dealing with the trade transaction that exporter must not be trading with any of those countries because it is restricted if buyer is located in restricted cover countries so just like sanction countries there are certain countries which are uh, placed under restricted cover countries now those are the countries with high political risk like armenia tajikistan uzbekistan these are placed in restricted cover so in certain cases restricted cover countries can be allowed but special ecgc permission will be required which, which is export credit guarantee corporation they would be providing permission after considering all the terms and conditions if it is valid if it can be approved but in any case sanction countries trading with sanction countries is not allowed restricted cover countries special permission can be taken in certain cases so these all things you must check if the exporter is not falling uh, in any of uh, these points well then uh, the bank might uh, might not provide the pre shipment finance might stop them on grounds of these uh, validity coming to disbursement of packing credit now we have understand the whole scenario that what is the flow chart uh, what all things are the prerequisite that the exporter must have if we need to provide them the pre shipment finance or funds now you need to understand how this disbursement is taken place so if you as an exporter you are approaching your bank you are holding account with your bank first of all we as bank we will be uh, providing certain sanction limit so limit will be sanctioned which would be mentioning the total amount that uh, okay uh, there is this limit approval uh, approval for uh, example 25 lakhs so a sanction limit is opened where we are allowing 25 lakhs of pre shipment finance can be granted to you the applicable rate of interest if it is uh, uh in foreign currency euribor or libor is the rate of interest which is applicable if it is in indian currency repo rate can be applicable so 
the rate of interest will be mentioned, the tenure will be mentioned for which the limit has been sanctioned, the margin will be mentioned. So generally the purchase order value which is 100% margin money is kept and after that the funds are provided. So the funds provided may be 75% or 85%. So these all things will be mentioned in the sanction limit which is opened for the exporter. What exporter needs to do? So this sanction limit thing is done by bank or financial institution itself. Now exporter has to get the application form from the bank. That application form needs to be duly filled and signed and that application form will be mentioning the buyer's name, the commodity which you are exporting, the amount that is involved in the transaction, the last date of shipment. Why is shipment date important? Because you are taking a packing credit for manufacturing of products. You must specify that after the manufacturing production is done, when you will be shipping the goods. So the last date till when you will be, your goods will be shipped. You have to mention that. That would be mentioned in the application form. You need to fill that as an exporter. In Kutam, you need to specify CIF or FOB. Uh, I have made a video on INCO terms also for reference you can just go to video and understand. So who will be bearing the insurance and freight charges whether it would be seller or the buyer. Underlying order so valid, valid confirmed purchase order, letter of credit in original or contract copy of projects undertaken any one of them whatever is the transaction for which you are taking the packing credit that needs to be presented. So what, what two things are compulsory which the exporter has to provide or the applicant has to provide? First is the application form, second is the underlying order copy, that's it. Rest things are being done by bank and financial institutions itself. Tenure, for what time period you can get this loan? So it would be 21 days from last date of shipment. So I told you that you have to mention the last date of shipment as an exporter. So from that date, 21 days extra is provided and after 21 days will be your due date when the payment has to be uh, debited from your account for the recovery of loan amount. 180 days from disbursement in case of running facility. So for certain exporters running account uh, packing credit facility is also provided because there are certain commodities which are seasonal and uh, orders are placed uh, 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 orders are placed but the season is not yet arrived. So in that case exporter can also ask for running account facility and running packing credit is provided. Now for that 180 days is granted from the disbursement. Extension can be done for the tenure but it would not go beyond 360 days. So extension can be done but not beyond 360 days. You need to consider all these things. Uh, these are considered while disbursing the packing credit. Now follow up of packing credit advance. Exporter need to submit stock statement reporting the stocks. Banks also physically inspect the stock at regular intervals. So bank need to uh, you need to see that the funds which are provided are being utilized for the same purpose. It cannot be utilized for any other purpose. If the exporter has taken the funds for production process, it must be utilized for production process only. For that reason, they need to submit their stock statement. The uh, bank can also physically visit the factories and inspect the stocks at regular intervals to see that whether the goods are being manufactured as per the contract or not. If the borrower fails to liquidate, liquidate the packing credit means if the borrower fails to do the repayment of the loan that they have taken, extension can be granted but as I mentioned it can be it cannot be beyond 360 days. In case the overdue position still persists, bank can take steps to realize the funds, realize the overdues as per the normal loan recovery procedure. Okay, so I hope this whole video would have been helpful for you in understanding pre-shipment finance. It is just like a loan which is being taken by exporter from bank, loan which is uh, uh, again as a simple procedure there are certain interest rate applicable, there is tenure applicable, there is margin which are kept. So it is a kind of loan which is taken by the exporter 
in terms of the trade transaction which is happening in some country which is located in foreign okay i hope this has been useful thank you so much